Oh, hello everyone and uh, welcome to GoChart Trader, live technical and fundamental analysis uh, with special guests uh, and good friend of Go Marcus Jindal Tai. Um, we, it's been a pretty interesting few weeks in, in Forex. We've seen some big central bank decisions uh, come out recently. It, I think price action in FX really still showing that it's uh, dancing to the tune of the central banks instead of the, whether they're going to hike by 25 or 50, it just seems that we're coming to that uh, end of the tightening cycles where the market's trying to guess if, if there's one more or two more or if, if we're done. Um, I think the Federal Reserve, perfect example with the uh, markets basically pricing in almost a very little chance of a, of a hike in September, whereas the Fed was saying there'd be two more. So the Forex market's really pushing along to those yields and those expectations of interest rates and and just looking at the charts we can see so much and it's really important for your trading I think to get a, a good understanding of those technical driving forces those levels um, and the fundamentals as well so without further ado anyway we're going to, I'm going to hand you over to Jin Dao and now if you don't know Jin Dao he's a renowned trading coach international speaker expert chart reading and underlying forces that drive the FX markets um, and one of our most popular guests. So I'm really, really glad to have you back. So welcome, Jin. Thanks for that. Thanks for that, Locker. Just before you go on, mate, I just need to quickly do the disclaimer um, before we go. So, I mean, everyone would have seen this before. We need to put it up. So it's, it's information provided, this presentation is, is general advice. It's purely the opinions of the presenters, being myself and Jin Dow, and it's not a recommended recommendation for any trading and with that done Jin I will set it over to you and you can do your thing uh, also anyone if you've got any questions please throw them across I'll keep an eye on it um, and I'll, I'll, I'll send them to Jin as well so one moment Thanks. mate no worries that was that was quick that was a quick disclaimer <laughs> yeah well everyone's seen it before <laughs> um... Okay, let me just make sure I got the right screen. Okay, there we have it. So I just want to check that everyone can see my screen okay. And yeah, for X Factor, I can see it. That it can hear me all right. I can't see the chat, so <coughs> oh. Oh, yes, everyone's saying it's all good, mate. Go ahead. Okay, cool. So again, you know, thank you all. Thank you, Lachlan, for getting me onto this call. And I'm super happy to be doing this session um, for Go, with Gold Markets and with Lachlan as well. Second time, I think. So we'll get this a bit more regular. Um, again, you know, at any point in time for you guys, if you have any questions, put it into the chat. Let us know. I'll be sharing with you, you know, some thoughts of where I see the the dollar heading, where the pound, where the euro, the yen. Um, if you have any specific pairs that you'd like me to look at, I'll be happy to do that as well. Um, I forgot I'll turn that on. So camera's on. Okay. <clears throat> so um, with all of that, and like what Lachlan was saying, it's come to the point now where markets are considering, right? They're considering whether we're heading into the period where central banks are going to be talking about pausing. Um, not really pivoting. I think it's still too early to think whether they're going to pivot. Pivot in the sense where they'll start cutting rates. Um, they are towards the tail end of hiking rates. Um, there is one or two more to go. Um, the question is now when is the end and then how long they're going to keep it at that high level. It's historic highs. Um, across the board, across all the central banks. So it's how long they're going to keep it there for before they start looking at cutting rates or dependent on the data, which is what all central bankers say. It's all dependent on the data, but the data being the CPI number, um, inflation growth as a whole, right? So just giving you what I'll do today is I'll be sharing with you a bit of a view of what to look out for over the next couple of weeks. Right. Um, most importantly, for in the next tomorrow, actually, no, the day after tomorrow, we do have the US CPI number to be released. Right. US CPI was 3% expected, a 3.3. So that's interesting considering that if you look at it, it has been 
dropping rather steadily. Now expecting a small tick to the upside could be driven by the inflation or the wage inflation that we saw um, the data being released on Friday with the non-farm payrolls, which I'll bring that up. <coughs> Oops. So, wait, what am I doing? Here we go. So non-farm payrolls on Friday actually showed a little bit of a surprising data where average hourly earnings stayed at 0.4%, did not drop to 03 we had a bit of a surprising non-farm release at 187k. Um, it was expected to be about 205. It got revised. It was at okay, it's not loading up. It was at 209. Got revised downwards to 185, and unemployment rate dropping. So it was a bit of a mixed data there, which we saw in terms of price action on Friday with the dollar index um, moving rather erratically this was on friday where it dropped and then after that through the night rebounded back up so now the question is u.s interest rates um, currently at 5.5 percent they just raised it 25 basis points um, the question is are they going to be uh, will there be another rate hike in september right um, the chances seems to have diminished but the FOMC have been indicating that there might be a chance, there might still be a chance that um, they might see it at 5.75%, uh, 25 basis point rate hike, and then that's it. At 5.5 right now, it's terminal rates, right? It's the terminal rates that which they previously indicated. What I mean by terminal rates is really the um, expect the top level expected number but doesn't mean that they have to stop there. I think that if over the next couple of data, like the CPI and the core PCE price index, um, over the next couple of weeks comes out still a little bit higher than expected, we might still see the um, interest rates. I will see another hike in September. Put it into the chat. What do you think? Do you think it's going to be another hike in September or are we going to see um the feds stay at 5.5 percent for maybe till october and then you know october november and then very seldom they do a december hike towards the end of the year so what do you think i looked at the odds today of the the fed watch it's only about 12 percent priced in with fed fund futures so this cpi this week i think is going to be a really big one and and the core pc in a couple of weeks um like you said, mate, it's going to be hard to say, I think. It depends on those readings, but just seeing if anyone's got an opinion on that. The good thing is there is still a lot of time heading in, well, the good or bad thing is there's still a lot of time heading into the September meeting. So anyone has a strong view on whether it's going to go up or down or stay? up we've got michael coming in is this hike jamilu i wouldn't hey, be Jamil. surprised with the inflation still well above their target band it's, it's certainly a possibility okay so you know i i actually think that there will be one more hike it's a very slim chance um, might not be in september they might hold in september but maybe the next one um, but I can't rule out that one more hike. And looking at the way the charts are playing out, this is the dollar index on H4 time frame. You can see on the water bump behind. It has been climbing since the 18th of July, right? It found a very good support just below 100. And then it's found a bit of a double bottom, not a very widespread double bottom, but a bit of a double bottom there and it's been climbing up, holding along this upward trend line, kept, right, most recently on, on last week, kept at the 102.80 level by this big downward trend line, which started on the 31st of May. So looking at this, I think that over, you know, definitely into 
the CPI data release, that's going to give us a good hint. I think it's going to stay within this range over the next couple of days. Um, with the CPI, if it does come out at that 3.3 .3 number, or maybe even 3.5, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, we could see that break towards the upside. Right? Ultimately, what I'm looking at is the possibility of the dollar index heading up towards that 103.50 region, which is this resistance level formed by the previous swing high we saw on the 30th of June and the 5th, 5th and 6th of July. Looking for it to come to this resistance level, you know, we'll see how that plays out, but I think that the next move, so this will be the first move, I'll say this will be the first move for the dollar index. The next move from here would probably not be so much driven by the strength or the weakness of the dollar, but more possibly by how the UK, how the Bank of England and how the ECB plays out on their own policy. Right? So I think first move could be up here and then um, I would like, I would actually like to see another move up to 104.50. But I think this will be the decision point to start off. So generally looking for more upside onto the dollar index. And I think that would paint my bias for the dollar index in the near term. The near term breakout of this pattern towards 103.50. Make sense so far? Hope it does. Okay. So from there, moving on from the dollar, expecting that upside push, then I'll jump to the pound dollar for now. Right, and again, you can see it's almost a similar pattern. We've seen that pound dollar climbing, right, climbing from the 26th of May, reaching up to as high as 1.3140 before trending back down again. Trending back down really because of how um, inflation in the UK has been sticky to the um, sticky to the high side, right? Despite all the rate increases from the Bank of England, uh, they had a surprise rate rate hike of 50 basis points the previous round, right? Oh no, the previous previous round, and then most recently. The Bank of England again raised rates by 25 basis points. It was a rather hawkish move, right? But although that was the case, we actually saw the pound dollar trading lower, um, ultimately, really, because they were saying that the rate hike, they've done, they did seem like they were done for now. Um, further rate hikes could be expected, but it's likely that. Um, they might hold and wait for further data. CPI in the UK is at 7.9% right now. It has been trending to the downside. So that might lead to some idea that maybe they have done enough. It's time to wait and see the compounding effect. Uh, right now, how I look at the pound dollar on the H4 time frame. Again, in that pattern, the resistance of 1.28 seems to be holding very well. Okay, 1.28 holding very well there. Um, if the Bank of England does not continue raising rates, or even if they do continue raising rates, I'll show you an interesting, this might take a little bit, but um, let me find it. An interesting point is that every time the Bank of England raises rates, right? In June, when they raise rates by from 4.5 to 5 at 50 basis points, June 22nd, you would notice that uh, June 22nd, when they raise rates, at that point, we actually saw here that the pound dollar actually shot up before, no, shot up because of that surprise hike of 50 basis points rather than 25, but overall traded back down, right? Traded back down again. Again, on the 11th of May and the 23rd of March. 
on the 11th of May, right there, about that point, on release of the decision, pound dollar traded lower, despite 27 on the 11th of May, a 25 basis point rate hike, and yet we saw it, we saw the pound dollar drop again, and 23rd of March, from 40, from 4 to 4.25, on the 23rd of March, let's do that. You see that same thing, small spike to the upside before trending lower again, despite a big uptrend at that time on the pound dollar. So it seems like regardless of whether the Bank of England is going to raise rates or whether they're going to hold or whether they're going to, unlikely, but um, in the future cut rates, we're going to see the pound dollar still trend towards, oh, react to the downside on release of the news, right? A brief upside move maybe, but overall still trading lower. So how I look at this on the pound dollar, expecting that dollar index to strengthen, right? expecting the dollar index to strengthen. Looking at the pound dollar, I think that we see good opportunity, especially if it breaks below this trend line, right, which also coincides with that 1.27, with that 1.27 round number support level. I think it's going to sit there, and as it comes down, break below that trend line. What I'll be looking for is a move towards the support of 1.2611, possibly 1.26 as a nice round number right there with the previous swing low we saw on the 29th of June. You know, if you were, and again, disclaimer applies, which we did right at the start. Um, if you're looking for a trade, you know, in the medium term, we could be looking at 1.2680, stop loss about 50 pips, just above that round number and that trend line, you would have a good 70 pips to the downside, but I think that if this continues down, we could even see a good 170 pips to the next support level towards that swing point of on the 13th of June. So I see good potential on the pound dollar continuing that push to the downside, um, especially if it breaks the bullish trend line and that 1.27 um round number support level not a very strong support if you look at 1.27 we do see some reactions not a very strong support but it does coincide quite nicely with the trend line as well so again what do you think about the pound dollar to the downside right driven by the expectation for further strength on the dollar the re possible reactions to the for any any further rate hikes from the Bank of England, it looks unlikely. But any further rate hikes from the Bank of England, we're possibly going to see, you know, a continuation to the downside on the pound dollar. So far, so good. Fair. Right. The question some of you might have is, what if it bounces back up? Right. It comes down to this support. 1.27 and that trend line and bounces back up it could very well do that it could look something like that bouncing along this point but i'm looking for that move to the downside uh, if it does break above 1.28 then i wouldn't say it would be an immediate change of trend and expecting the pound dollar to you know reverse strongly to the upside. I would say that above 1.28, we do have another level here at 1.3, which is a good 200 pips away. All right, a good 200 pips away at this point. Um, but if you looked at this with Fibonacci levels in there, all right, 1.27 coincides with 38.2. Um, there are many levels, 50 and 61.8, to provide some resistance. I think that if we do see the pound dollar break above this point, 
it is going to suffer. It's not going to be a straight line upwards, right? It does have many other levels to break. <clears throat> so I still look at this as more downside potential rather than the upside. Even if we look at a smaller time frame, um, shorter term FIB levels, then we could still see 1.28 being that 50% retracement level providing that resistance so all that combined still looking for that downside on the pound dollar on the h4 time frame all good any questions put into the chat if you think otherwise put into the chat if you if you agree and you know think it's a good idea remember it's this is a bit longer term there are a lot of other data to come into play um, but I think that it's going to be dependent on the dot, not just the dollar index, but also, you know, any further comments from the um, Bank of England. Then on to everyone's favorite, which is the euro dollar. Okay. Euro dollar, a lot more straightforward. They also just announced a, 25 basis point rate hike, taking rates from 4 to a 4.25%. But, and I'll bring that up. Where was that? Um, I forgot when when did they hike rates. I think it was not last week, the week before, mate. I'm not, I'm not 100%. It might have been. It wasn't. It was recently. I think it was towards the end of the month. Yeah, there we go. Okay, thanks for that. So 27th of July, where they took rates from 4 to 4.25. But the difference is during the press conference, the headlines were actually quite, quite um, definitive, where President Lagarde was saying near-term economic outlook has deteriorated, um, one more hike with chance of no more, right? So sounds like from memory it sounds like um, the ecb is one of the first few central banks to actually say to actually indicate that hey we might not have any more rate hikes and that's also why on the 27th of july you saw the news come out i'll zoom in a bit right that was the 27th of july on release of the news at that point, about that point there, we saw the euro dollar. It was climbing very nicely up towards that top of that channel at 1.11, almost 1.1150, hit the top and then strong big reversal back down, driven down by the idea that economic data in the eurozone not doing very well, and also the ECB indicating that um, they were not maybe one more maybe no more rate hikes and that's why you know it's been it's already been on the downward it's been trading towards the downside that actually compounded the effects and we're look, actually looking at further downside on the euro dollar right so looking at further downside on the euro dollar at this point still a little bit too early to get into a trade we do still have that longer term bullish trend line supporting any downside um, it is in that channel the first target i would say would be along this support level which would coincide quite nicely with that bottom of the channel as well so first move might be to again disclaimer applies but we could be looking at breaking the low or if it breaks the trend line or breaking the low 1.0930 stop loss i would keep it very tight here just because we do have that trend line we do have um that providing a little bit of a dynamic resist resistance and then you could have your take profit down to 80 pips almost a one is to three or one is to 2.2 to the downside there on the euro dollar okay and then I think that the bigger move or the more interesting one will be if 
the price does break below 1.0845 or 1.0840, right? Because we have seen this level providing very strong or very good support towards the end of June all the way through to early July, price bouncing off three times from this support level. What I'm looking at, I'm not really so keen on this move, to the downside, I would rather look for that, right? So I think that we could see this coming up to that, and then I'll be looking for a break of that support, so about 1.0825, a good downside potential of 175 pips at this point, even if you had your stop loss at about 40, 50 pips, it still makes very good um, it still makes a very good trade setup in terms of your risk reward, in terms of um, trending trending scenarios to the downside. Okay, so just looking at the pound dollar, looking at the uh, euro dollar, we are anticipating right for the further downside on the pound dollar. Looks like it might happen a lot earlier than expected. Euro dollar might take a little bit more time for the big downward move. And that's also why I said that looking at the dollar index, and I know I'm switching between charts quite a bit, so I hope you are still on track. You know, the first move on the dollar might be a dollar strength or technical play on the dollar index to the upside. I think that a second move, the second leg of the move, this would possibly be driven by the weakness in the euro leading on to the strength on the dollar index or and or the combination of the euro and the pound dollar uh, trading lower which could be driving the dollar index towards the next leg up towards that 1.104.50 resistance level all right so far so good any questions Put it into the chat, let us know. Okay. So, you know, after talking about the three major central banks, um, all hiking rates, or um, some of them talking about no, well, the ECB talking about no, possibly no more, the Bank of England talking about, you know, waiting for data, the US possibly with one in September, low chance, or maybe one more for towards the end of the year. The one, the central bank who has been the most active was the Bank of Japan, right? Um, the Bank of Japan hasn't changed their policy, right? It hasn't changed their monetary policy. They have kept it at minus 0.1%. They haven't increased in terms of quantitative easing, they're still doing easing. Uh, but on the 28th of July, you can see here, just that dotted line there, <clears throat> 28th of July, um, the Bank of Japan actually did adjust, they did a tweak on their YCC, the yield curve control. What they came around doing was, uh, or announced was that they were going to buy 10 year government bonds, JGBs, at 1%. And I think they did it at an, if I'm not wrong, they did it at an unlimited amount. I'm not gonna go to- So I believe that's what they said. I'm pretty sure that's what they said, yeah. Yeah, so an un unlimited amount of 10 year JGBs at 1%. Expect, it was, that was supposed to be a bit of an indirect intervention. It looks, it was intended to be a, some of an indirect intervention. I'll move this to the side just so you can see. But what actually happened was that the US yen spiked up. It was at about 139.47 or 139.50, spiked up to 141, went as low as 138 before pushing higher again. So not, not the intended result that the Bank of Japan would have expected. Um, and that's possible. that was what they would consider a bit of a um, preempting um, 
policy changes in the policy, you know, some level of intervention, but yet we still saw they're expecting possibly for it to break lower, right? To break lower into below that 138 level, maybe down towards 135, did not happen. In fact, what we actually saw was a yen pushing quite a lot higher. It went from one within the week, right? 28th, so let's say Monday, well, 28th was at 138 or 139. By within the week, it went up to 143. So significantly higher, but wasn't driven by the um, idea of an intervention. It wasn't driven by the 10-year um, JGBs, really because of that dollar strength. Right on the 28th of July, if we switch over to the dollar index again, you see that the dollar strength also bounced off the bottom of the trend line towards the upside all the way through to the 3rd of August. So possibly no, like we didn't see that effect because of the strength of the dollar pushing the US yen to the upside. So what happens? All right, what to expect now for the US yen? Uh, it's currently at 143. It's currently at 143 with a near term high of 145 or major resistance level at 145. And a bit of an interim level here at 143.70. What, what I anticipate, right? And we have heard many, um, many lines. I'll show you this. I was just sharing this with a couple of um, another group where, um, let's see, you can find it. Right, just 20, almost 24 hours ago, we had um, Japan's Mr. Yen saying, expecting no yen intervention. We've just had, I think, the last couple of hours, BOJ Governor Oeda. Uh, commenting that he was slightly concerned about the um, the way the yen is performing and how it's weakening. All right, the Japan wage growth slows backing the Bank of Japan ultra easy policy case. They're still looking at further weakness on the yen, possibly further weakness on the yen, uh, with possibly no intervention in the short term. So what I'm looking at here is on the yen, if it does break above 143.70, immediate target would be at 145. So I would be looking at maybe one, almost 144, no, just a small trade up towards 145. This could be something that you might want to think about, but if you're not comfortable about it, I would say you could even forego that because what's going to be interesting is if the yen does get up to 145, look at what happened at 145 back then, right? Set there at a resistance and then we saw big downside. So I anticipate that at 145, again, we might see um, more comments from the Bank of Japan, from all members and from all members from the Bank of Japan, ministers, finance ministers coming around saying that talking about intervention, possibly indicating that they're not going to intervene, but I think that you can't rule out a possible intervention at this 145 level. If you go back, I think it was yes, March last year, wasn't it, or October last year, where they started jawboning around that level. You can see there where your crosshair is. Yeah. Did get higher, and then all of, all of a sudden they dropped the hammer. You can you know, see that big drop. Yeah. So it was right at this point. So you know, last year, well, October last year, we saw the yen climb up to that 151 level, high of 151. Through you see all those minor interventions there too where you're out to the left it's just that's when they started jawboning around that 145 so i think yeah i think if it gets yeah. that level again you'll start to see that jawboning and it'd be exactly very yeah. hard so, to not do something this they they do seem to have that um that 145 level 
as at their their limit. So this was what happened the last time round. It came up to 145. I'm not sure about this ones, but this was definitely a a trial. I call it a trial intervention, right? I think they they even came out and said they didn't do anything, but I think it was a trial intervention. Didn't succeed. It went up to 152. Almost 152, and this was definitely a um, one one intervention here, and then this was the big one. This was the big one that we saw it come back down. So we are approaching. So if I zoom right out, or oh, I went to the daily time frame. Oops, where am I? Right. If we went to the daily time frame, we are approaching that same level that we saw the big reaction. Um, Twenty in September and again in November. Right now we are coming up to that point. I don't think that they will, I don't think we will see a reaction immediately at 145. Might They might sit there, test it out, see what happens. But again, if that dollar index does continue rising to that 104, 105 level, then the yen is going to keep going up. <clears throat> we're going to see, <clears throat> we're likely to see that intervention come into play. Hey, Jen, we've just got a request from Attila to have a look at the Aussie four hour, if you've got yep. that on your radar. <clears throat> yep. And silver as well, <clears throat> yep. if you got a chance. Yep. It might be running short, but. So, um, yeah, so there's the yen. I, I think that, you know, maybe wait for it to get to 145 um, we might see some further upside depending on how the dollar index move but when i'm looking at the us yen in the longer time frame i think my mind is switching towards trying to identify levels where we might see an intervention you know looking for that big those kind of big moves relatively low risk but big moves that we could try and take advantage of Okay, so with that, then we look at the Aussie. We have to look at the Aussie dollars. All right. Um, unfortunately, not a lot of good news for the Aussie. Right. Still trending to the downside. Um, just a quick reminder again. I can't. What was the RBA's view? Do you have that locked in? Most recent view. Uh, mate, they were. Their statement was almost a carbon copy of the last one. It was basically they were happy to leave them on hold for now to wait and see how their hikes go through the economy, but they would hike again if needed. Data dependent, like like pretty much all the central banks, they're all in that data pen dependent mode, as you know, um, which makes, I guess, the news releases a bit more exciting because every one of them matters now. But yeah, same, same, same old story. Yeah, so thanks for that. That's why I couldn't, you know, uh, recall it, it's just the same thing. Um, not not good news, right? Um, I think that as much as the RBA has indicated that you know they they might be on hold, they will increase further if um, if required, depending on data. The the rates are is seeing a lot of or is applying a lot of pain onto households. Households in Australia, you know, mortgage rates through mortgage repayments through the roof, um, household spending declining, um, not looking very good at this point. So again, if I ran through the um, RBA interest rates decision, plotting it against the chart, you'd see that most of the time after an RBA rate decision, we see the Aussie dollar drop. I'm still looking at further downside on the Aussie, I wouldn't trade it down for now. It is currently at 0 0.6513, almost 0 0.65 as a round number. Uh, we do have the previous swing low here at 0 0.6460, which we saw in May. Um, I would say stay out of it for now, wait for a reaction along this support level. All right, I'll wait for a reaction along this point. Um, anticipating that dollar strength to come around, we might see the Aussie dollar continue trading lower 
and in fact that would be a easier trade right i think that the aussie dollar would present a good opportunity for both styles of trading if you are contrarian and you're looking for a um a counter trend trade you know wait at this support we could see it bounce i mean if the dollar index strength fails we might see this bounce back up um, i'm more of a trending trend following trader so i'll prefer to look for it to break past this support say about 0 0.6440 relatively tight stop loss at 40 take profit all the way down to 140 almost 150 to the downside towards that support of 6285 which is very far away but we saw that in november last year right we do have a bit of an interim level here at 6388 or 6390 so that's what i'll be looking for on the aussie dollar in terms of you know if you were hoping or trying to identify a possible bounce still have to wait for it to bounce off this support i don't think it's going to do or rather if it bounces from this point i don't think it's going to be a strong bounce or a sustained bounce we might see something more interesting at the support at 6460 um, but in terms of following the trend to the downside i think that breaking that support we could see, you know, anticipating the dollar strength, we could see that trade lower. I think one thing to watch the Aussie dollar too, mate, is it's a real, uh, it's very sensitive to global risk equities and the US futures are down pretty heavy at the moment. So probably a factor of its of its weakness today anyway. It's it's Aussie and Kiwi I find are yeah, very sensitive to global risk. If you big equity down day, they're the first currencies that get sold. Yeah. And and we just had the um, Apple stocks dropping. <clears throat> I think that we're possibly due for some correction on equity side as well. So that's possibly going to be another another driver to the downside. <clears throat> so it's talking about the Aussie dollar and the Kiwi dollar. Then Kiwi dollar very similar to the Aussie. You know, within that channel to the downside. Um, if you were looking at a bit of a shorter term trade compared to the Aussie, right? Aussie was saying, wait for it to come down to the support and we'll decide. Kiwi dollar, you might even be looking at that support as well. And that support coinciding with that bottom of that channel. We do have this point where it's broken that previous low, swing low on the 29th and most recently on the 3rd broken to the downside this would be a short-term trade you could be looking right tight stop 20 30 pips take profit about 50 <clears throat> so what's going looking for it to trade down to that support level and then thing about the kiwi dollar is i like i liken more of a bounce at that support because you look at this all the way right across the next level is way down here at 5849 or 5850 um, very similar setup compared in comparison to the Aussie dollar I would I, I would prefer the Aussie at some um, in terms of that just because the RBNZ seems to be a little bit more on the way in terms of their policy the rba seems to still be in that decision factor we could still see more pain or from coming from the rba well the rbnz's meeting i think next week isn't it and they've yeah I know the, the futures are pricing and only about a five percent chance of a hike so it's looking pretty likely to be a hold most likely going to be a hold i think from my view and and you know i entirely basing this off um, everything that I've read, I can't pinpoint on what, I think that the RBNZ might be one of the first few to possibly be cutting. All right? I don't think it'll be happening soon, but I think they might actually be one of the first few central banks to start cutting rates. Yeah, I agree they, with that. 
they have been, they have, I think they were one of the first few to hike rates quite aggressively as well. So wouldn't be surprised if they were the first few to cut rates. Um, just got a request to have a look at the Aussie, Aussie Yen, if you've got time there, Jin. Yep. Okay, so Aussie Yen, we have this. Um, so the thing is, again, looking at the Aussie Yen, thinking about the Aussie dollar first, we're looking at more downside towards um, 6460, the yen possibly anticipating that upward push. Um, but I think to refine this, I think that there's a lot more to happen within this range before we see the upward push. So with that translating to the Aussie yen, right, you can see that we do have that downward trend line, applying some downward pressure, but I'm a little bit more, I would be a little bit more cautious on the Aussie yen just because of how it's been, oh, it's coming very close to that support at 92, right? A nice round number at 92 there, currently at 93.22, right? So even if it does break below this, near term low right? we don't seem to have a lot of space about 100 pips to the downside on the aussie yen fair enough if the aussie dollar does drop we're going to see the aussie yen drop but you know if the us yen if the us dollar if the dollar index continues strengthening and we see the um Aussie yen continue, well, we see the yen continue pushing higher, then we might actually see it come back up and test 95, maybe even 95. So Aussie yen, I would feel that it's going to be in a bit of a conflicting situation. Aussie dollar applying, you know, some weakness on the Aussie dollar applying that downward push, but upside, potential upside on the yen is going to um, offset some of the downward and then maybe push it back up again. Ultimately, how I see this is that as it sits along this level, we might see it come back down, test and rebound back up, maybe driven by some um, further weakness in the yen. So one more request made is um, pound kiwi. Pound kiwi, let me find it. Okay, I have it there. Look at that. All right, this, so I focus mostly on the um, majors. So let me just have a look at a pound kiwi. If you look at the pound kiwi, you do have a nice upward. It almost looks like there's a channel there supporting the upward move. Approaching the top of that um, channel. And if I looked at it on a daily time frame, we are approaching very high levels. And this, the last time we got to this point was in 2020. That's just and when all the, risk, all the risk currencies started coming off because of the pandemic yeah. lockdowns, et cetera, yeah. And then we have a, some spike up there. I don't know whether it's a pricing thing or we have some spike oh, up there. At, it'd be the COVID um, thing, mate. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a COVID, COVID spike. COVID. Yeah. So at one, 2.19. So, you know, main thing to worry about is that we are into that two year historic levels. At this point right now, I would say that back to the H4 time frame, you know, definitely based on what we're expecting or what we're looking at or what we were just talking about, pound dollar, looking at that weakness coming around, right? Looking at that weakness coming around. Um, Kiwi dollar depends on what happens at that support, might bounce, might break lower. But if this comes around, if the pound dollar does drop to that 1.24 or 1.2, Two five level that's going to possibly lead to a test. What could look like is a test and then a reject and then maybe a back down again. 
So I, I would be very careful if I were looking to buy the pound kiwi to the upside with many confluences um, holding nice nice round number at one at 2.1 at 2.11 close as well. I think that while upside potential is there, might be very choppy price action at this historic high. Um, could see a big reversal back down again. Um, if not all the way, then at least down to 2.865, down to that 50% level. Fair enough. Much appreciated, Bam Bam says. <laughs> No worries. I hope I hope you don't have a position open. Um, but we'll see. Then lucky last, I will do or one of the last few I'll do. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, gold, right? So gold has been, you know, I I do a lot of scalping on gold. I do very short term trading on gold. Um, has been very choppy. Right? It has been very choppy. Um, big spikes and retracements. But generally, you see that since the end, towards the end of July, we have seen gold um, tapering to the downside. Right now, consolidating along this 1930 uh, interim support level, which also coincides with this 61.8 tip retracement from the longer term. So I think this is going to be an interesting level that holds gold for now. Right, holds gold for now. Um, I would like to see maybe a little bit more of a bounce before anticipating some downside on gold. It might also form a bit of a head and, you know, if it bounces up a little bit, we might see a bit of a head and shoulder pattern, break of the neckline, could see further downside on gold. As, again, um, as, we ex as we anticipate some strength on the dollar index that's going to lead to gold pushing lower so you know thinking that we could see this push down all right at least towards that 78.6 level which is 1914 um at the very most 1896 but i think you know that's a very far level to be projecting i think that that's a good interim level to look for so everything seems to be well as we all know everything's driven by the dollar index and it seems to be reinforcing that um, on what the dollar index is going to do looks like it's ha might be happening a lot earlier than expected but you know patience it just needs to break out of this area first thank you andrew any other questions? Uh, does do you have a YouTube channel to follow? Is uh, Christina's asking? I do. Um, it's, just search for me on YouTube. <laughs> Jindal Thai. <laughs> yeah. Um, is it okay to share my YouTube? Sure. Let me just bring it up. Okay, so there you go. You can find me on my YouTube. And it's really Jindal Thai. Okay. You can also find me on Trading View as well. Any other questions? Lachlan, do you want to share about the Aussie Kiwi? I like I like your analysis on the Aussie Kiwi. Aussie Kiwi, actually, I might just put my screen on, mate. If that's all right. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'll just there's a there's a couple of charts I'd like to go through while everyone's here. Um, yeah. How do I set myself back to presenter? There we go. All 
Okay, this is my chart. Yes, you can see my the chart here. This, the first one I want to look at actually is um, just showing the importance of understanding what yields, what yields, the effect yields have on, on Forex. And a, a lot of people don't even think of bond yields, etc. but it takes a bit of a lot of the mystery, I think, out of um, what's going on in the Forex market. Now, this is the dollar index uh, with the US 10-year yield in the orange line. You see this 10-year yield, every time it's got over 4%, which is just done recently again, it's really, you know, put a bit of a stop on on dollar index. Well, it, it certainly made it harder for the US dollar rally because the the yields are struggling to get higher than four percent, which means the dollar index has a little bit of a headwind against it. Now, that yield being there doesn't mean the dollar index is going to be any certain level, but it will. I think it will give a a, a definite headwind to it. So, if you're with TradingView, you can bring these yields up. This is US 10Y. It's called. Um, you can see that the, every time it's got over 4%, which is around there, we've seen that kind of short-term top in the US dollar. We're there now, it's coming back down. How, if this US, if the dollar index can hold while these yields drop, the next time these yields pop, then what, as Jindal said, we could see it, you know, start to rally up to that 104 level or so. So it's really is gonna see how the dollar reacts to the yields topping out at that 4% level. But that's, um, so that's something I'd definitely look at. Now, Aussie Kiwi, Um, this is one of my favourite go-to charts. Let me just get rid of the yield off that. Give me a moment. So I like look. This is one of my my boring go-to trades, the old Aussie Kiwi. Now the reason I love it is because it's such a range-bound pair. It's a pair that extremely highly correlated um, economies and, and and currencies. It's You've got some real confidence that this range, it's, it's never going to go, to, well, never say never, but it's very unlikely to go too far outside this range. So I like to put it into these four quadrants. Um, it's the mid price around this level here, 109. Anything below that is what I call, I guess, if the, the if you're going to do mean reversion, is that kind of buy zone. 106, 107, 106, 105 handles. So obviously you don't go all in on the first one, but it's, it's a, what I do is I, I build into trades when it's in this green until it comes back up to um, that mid price. I, I, I'm more likely, I, I feel safer buying it in the in the lower zone than I do in, in the higher zone. Actually, I think that's a little bit higher. It should be a bit lower than that. Sorry. Yeah, I think it's been moved. It's more about 108, I think, that mid price. Um, a couple of spikes down here. This was COVID and this was, I'm not even sure what happened back then, but the Aussie dollar obviously copped it. But normally, it really does just range between these. So it's definitely one to keep an eye on for those longer term uh, trades, small volume type of trade that you can sleep at night knowing that it's not gonna shoot you know, 5,000 pips in one direction against you. Um, the other one I wanna show about the relationship between yields and a currency pair, which we, we saw the Aussie US today. Um, on this one, this orange line is the difference between the Australian 10 years and the US 10 years. So the yield that is, when this is going down, this is this is a this is Aussie minus US. So when this is going down, means the US is out pacing us in their 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 interest. Um, their interest is going up faster than ours, which would obviously push the Aussie dollar down. Um, yeah, so I, I do encourage everyone to get on TradingView, just experiment with some of these. It's it's quite it's a, such a great platform you can add and you can superimpose um, other markets over other markets, but the yields over currencies um, will take a bit of the mystery out of it, I guess. Like you say, why is the Aussie dollar going down? Well, if you see what the yield differential is doing, it does make perfect sense. And you see this little bounce here and now it's going down again. So as a trader for Forex, I always keep an eye on these. Um, it's obviously not a perfect correlation, but there is a very strong relationship between either direct yields or real yield differentials between the countries and the Forex pair. So one to keep an eye on if uh, you want to extend your knowledge of why Forex pairs do what they do. Um, Lachlan, can I ask, do you see any lag in it or in terms of the yield and the price movement? 
Oh, there is. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's it's it's. You can see the correlations quite close. When you get a spike up, like you can see, um, the, the the differential in the Aussie US here. Uh, you know, it's it's really moved up. Aussies moved up, and it gets to an extreme. I think the important things with the yields is there is levels, just like in forex, there's levels which is really um, evident on. Oh, sorry, I've gone out of the DXY one, haven't I? More more evidence say on um, some than others. So when that US yield is over four percent in recent history anyway, the last couple of years, that has really been the, the ceiling of that yield. So you, you can, as you would put support and resistance levels on the actual currency, you can put those support and resistance levels on, on the yield as well. Um, and seeing it, let me just go back out to the daily. I mean, for the last couple of years, anything over this 4%, which I need to just fix up. Sorry, guys. Four percent here. So if I move that red box up, you can see that it's, it's come up, and it's yes, it can go a bit further, just like the intervention level on the on the pound yen, but sorry, the dollar yen. But it has struggled, and it's really marked the top there, there, here. You can see it's rolled over. So not instantly, but it's very, very closely correlated. And I think once you see it over four percent. Um, you've got to kind of think we kind of might, might have seen the top of the US dollar at that stage f f temporarily anyway. We've seen here it's gone quite high. Um, it's come off a little bit, but the, the, the thing is the US dollar has held up really well, even though it's coming down. So um, that's a sign that we, yes, may see a little bit of heaving on the US dollar, but if that can hold why these yields kind of normalize a little and when they start going up again, then the US dollar will have a leg up from a higher level, if you know what I mean. So yep. I would certainly watch the yields, it's especially in this environment. It's with everything's about the central banks, everything's about inflation. Um, you know, in my career, yields have always been important, but I think more so than ever the last couple of years. Definitely, that's interesting. Uh, are you are you finished your charts, mate? Do you want me to put you back on, or you're right? Um, I'm done. I'm done with my charts. Okay. All right, well, let me just bring up the couple of slides. Okay, wrong one. Okay, we've done the disclaimer. Um, thank you so much, Jin. I, I, it's always an absolute pleasure to have you on, mate. I, I really enjoy your webinars and, and learn a lot myself. So we'll, we'll get you on more often and we'll, yeah, let's, let's talk. But um, yeah, always, always a pleasure having you on, mate. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity. No problem. Um, before everyone goes, I just want to remind you that we do, if you want to see some more from Go Markets, we do have daily live updates with our head of education, Mike Smith, which I know, I'm sure many of you know. Um, he's very good. 12.35 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, we'll go over all the charts in the Asian session, what's going on. Uh, it, also every Wednesday, which tomorrow night, obviously, he does really good webinars. Um, tomorrow night's one's the impact of trader personality on investment approaches and outcomes. I know he's been working very hard with some AI tools, etc., to to do that one. So it'll be a very, very interesting session. I think I'll certainly be um, tuning in. I will just find the. Give me a moment. I'll put the links if anyone's interested to register for those uh, webinars. Go for it. If you want some more information about webinars or about tonight, about anything, um, you can email research at gomarcus.com. Um, that's the email address I answer. So if you have any questions about what Jin Dow said, I could pass them on to him or anything about yields or anything about webinars, um, feel free to reach out in that email address. And thank you everyone for attending. That was um, an interesting webinar, Jin. Again, thank you for that. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone. Take care now. All right. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, I'll speak to you soon, Jim. Sure.